So, here's my new spinning fan tutorial I'm going to do. I'm doing a video to show you a couple things. Instead of having to type it all, this would be easier. And you should be able to follow along decent. Uh, it's, it's basically easy. Just make sure if you make your own, you'll most likely be flat and line with the grid. So all you have to do is select the fan, create a bone, center it to the fan, skin it, rotate it in place, and add your line in XML. And that's all. That'd be fine. But say uh, you download the model and the fan is already there. You need to figure out what angle the fan is rotated on. So to do so, I come up with a solution that's fairly easy. Right now, though, this is... This, uh, this is the angle that I got it on. Go to select and rotate, and it's 41036. I don't know if the fan shows. Yeah, the fan. See, the fan, I'm not sure, but sometimes you have three numbers, you know, depending on how the model's made. So what I'm going to do is, which might be a good idea for it to do as well, go here to the uh, hierarchy tab. Hit transform and scale, and then hit reset export. Make sure everything is back to normal. Oops, wrong one. Now, when you select that, the X, the, when you select, select and move, the gizmo is showing the proper axis. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is, what, what you want to do next is find the center. So, I'm going to hide everything else. And uh, mine's already set. Oops, what the heck. Mine's already set, so I know it's in center. But say this model is the fan blades are a little even. Say the person modding it didn't, uh, didn't make them correct. Oops, that ain't good. So you you're basically want to do all you can to get the proper center. What I would do is select the element. Uh, select the center if, if it's made like that. Find some that's pretty decent and round. Uh, unless the model's over, you'll have to either remake it or fix it up. Detach that. Just not as clone or element. Just detach that. And then select it. Go to the hierarchy tab. Hit effect pivot only and select the centered object. Now you know it's centered correctly. <clears throat> Um, well, again, if you made it yourself, you won't have to do all that. And now, to figure out how to, what the angle is on, you need, a, you need a straight edge that is on this here axis, on the axis that it's rotated on, which is the X. So what you need to do, you need to find a spot that you can cut it. Uh, what I'm going to do is this. Select this polygon, detach this clone, and hide everything else. Well, first I'm gonna hide that. No, nope. I'm gonna hide, get rid of that. I'm gonna attach the center back to the fan blade. But you wanna select the fan blades and attach the fan blades back to that because the, the center is what you already centered. If you select the fans, the blades it might be off. So you wanna. Select the center, then attach the fans to that. So this polygon I, I detached, hide everything else, put it in the view so you can see it. Go to the modify, select polygon, select the polygon, and slice plane. Turn it so it's vertical. Oops. Have the uh, snap toggles on so it's easier to get it right on the center. Turn that off, and then what you want to do is find a place where these polygons, all these edges, are on this side because you, I'm looking from this side. If I chose this side, I would see all these, all these vertices and polygons or edges, and it might, it won't be as easy because you want, you want to work off the straight edge. So I'm gonna select this side, put it here, hit slice. Uh, un undo that, dismiss that, select this polygon and delete it. 
Now there's my edge I'm going to work with. And like I said, I, I will, I'm going to go from this side here, and now I know that's the full edge I'm working with. Because if I, if I was using this side here, well, it might work too, but depending on how you did it, you might not see the straight edge. So I just work this way here. Now from here, you want to measure from here to here for your work because you want to create a plane the same size. So select snap toggles and right click it first. You should, if you didn't change this, you'll have grid points. I uncheck grid points because I never use it and I select vertex. So when I use some, it'll select to the vertices. Now, I got a shortcut for measure distance, but go under tools and measure distance if you don't have, if you don't use this normally. So then you go to here with snap towers on from this corner here, from this vertex, this one here, and down in the left corner is the size, is the length of that edge, which is, so now what you want to do is create a plane, turn that off. I mean, you might be leaving out, but I don't know if it will mess you up when you create a plane. Create a plane on the, on the grid flat, and then you want to make it to that size. I'll go two. And then 5.81. So I just made two so that I know what side's which. Now you want to line the plane to the bottom edge of this down here. This edge here, like that. So when you turn it, these both both these edges are in line. You also want to be in ortho orthogonal because if you're in perspective, it's not going to be. Well, it looks it looks straight, but it's, it's going to mess you up. You want to work in orthogonal. So now that that's straight, to find the angle, you turn it this, turn it to the side. Now, because when you do that, they're not shown. You hit and you either hit F3 or F4, and that'll show the edges. Now you go to this here, the shapes, arc. And you want to select center and end, and hit snap toggles again. You want to go start here where, they, where both edges connect, press and hold, you go to here, you see a little snap to it, let go, and then bring this up and go to that, that edge there and click. Now select any, go anywhere in the viewport and right click to this Mr. Arc. Now if you angle it, you can see, see what it is, that, that's the arc, you see the arc that I created. Now. If it was, if you had other things selected, you just select the arc, go to modify panel, and this here's the angle that it's on, but <clears throat> I'm not sure, I can't explain why it's like this, it doesn't give you the exact one, you just got to do a little math. You want to extract the from, from 180. So down here in this box, I don't know what it's called, you go 180 minus one, one oops, 138 point nine six four and that's the angle that your fan is rotated on so I don't need that anymore I'll just put that on a, on a separate layer and hide it and unhide everything else bring back the regular view turn off edge faces select the fan because that's all I want to work with because I'm not gonna rotate this because we're just working with the fan hide everything else and then turn it sideways so I can see how, how it rotates. Select rotate. Snap toggles, I don't know, usually on. I don't know how you work it. If it's off, it's on, whatever. You can have it off or on. Rotate a little bit. Get it started. Then go down here, see 41.36. Replace this with 41.036. And it's straight. It's horizontal with the grid. With with the x-axis so now you can add now you would create a bone go to systems bone I like mine small so I keep it on 10 right click anywhere where you want to create it and then you're going to adjust it to this the cone itself which you want hit it again and then right click for the second one and just delete that anywhere in the uh, Go in and put your mouse anywhere in a viewport. Right-click to dismiss the bones, and then select the bone. Now you.
you want the bone in its original orientation. It's rotated. So you go select and rotate. And right here, you see that's the angle that it's rotating on. Make it zero. And there's your original axis. The original, yeah, the axis orientation, whatever you want to call it. Now what you want to do, you want to align the bone to the fan. To the, so hit align. Make sure your bone is selected. Hit align. Select the fan. You want to check all three. If yours not, if yours aren't, use some. If you never use it, maybe only one is selected. And a lot of times it's on center. As you can see, it's not aligning to the center of the fan, to the pivot point. So you always want to use pivot point. And then OK. Now your bone is, is aligned to the fan in the center. Next, you can rename the bone to whatever you want. Well, I use bone fan. Now, now you want to skin the fan to the bone. So you select the fan, go to modify. You, I, I got these shortcuts set up, but you would go down here, select skin, hit add, select the bone, and it's skin. A good way to check it is you would uh, hit edit envelopes, and you can see all the colored vertices, meaning that it's weighted, but you really can't tell how it's weighted. So to check that, you would go down here, pull that up, hit weight table. You can see all the vertices are weighted to one. That means it's fully weighted to the bone. Another way, what you want, if you want to see it better, see this is textured, so you're not seeing the, you're not seeing the polygons colored. You can go to this tab here, the display, select object color, go back to there, hit edit tab, and it'll color the polygons to the weight. If it's a lesser weight, you'll have a yellow, blue, green. Fully weighted is red. So now that you know it's weighted correctly. You can get out of that, go back to material color, go back. Now, you want to take the fan and attach it to the bone. So go in here, select the link. You can either two ways. You can select the fan, hit the, hit the select the link, hold, select in the fan anywhere so you see this icon, press and drag to the bone. And if you go to this here, select the name, you can see that it's, that it's weighted. I mean, it's uh, aligned. But you can also do this. Uh, select the fan, hit select the line, select, select by name, and then double click the fan. And it's weighted the same way. Either way, you can do it either way. I don't know why this is not named fan, though. Oh, because I, because I uh, detached the center. So now all I got to do is select the bone, hit rotate, select and rotate. Start rotating at first to see where, where it goes because it will give you a negative number. Down here is your number that, it was, that you figured out before. You don't want to press in here right now because it will disappear if you do. You want to keep that number, don't press there. So that's use 41.036, select that, 41.036. Hit enter, and that's the angle that it was originally rotated on. Right click, select unhide all, and it's perfectly in line. Now, also, what you want if you want to see the axis of the bone, you select select the move, <clears throat> but you're always going to see the viewport gizmo the, the viewport view of the axis it does not showing the original axis of the bone for that you want to hit this box here hit it and so this comes down and select local and that'll show you the axis that it's on I forgot to mention also I always use I just use the default Z axis up when I model so anything I do I'm using the Z-axis. 
when I, when it exports, because I use the X exporter, the X exporter switches the Z and the Y and makes it right to use in spin tires. <clears throat> Others will turn their model to use the Y axis. I can't get used to that, and this is what I do, but I don't know. You can probably do basically the same thing the other way. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just can't tell you how exactly how that'll work because I don't do it. But I want to just show you this here to show you the access that it's on, the original access of the bone. So now, if you select rotate, again, it's on the view. If you try to rotate, it's not going to rotate correctly. So just hit uh, undo. Select this box. Select local. And since I was on the Z axis, I need to select the blue, the blue circle, which is here. And then see, it rotates on the Z axis, and it's correct. Okay, so I mean that you really, really don't. That's nothing. That's really not necessary to know exactly. But I wanted to show you that just so you knew how to do it. Now you're all set. After the, well, first of all, make sure, well, we already uh, did that. Make sure your fan is linked to here. Now your bone, <coughs> your phone, your bone fan, you want to link it to your body. Either the main bone for your vehicle, or if you got another vehicle set up, another bone set up, like for your bed or the back part of your vehicle, whichever one you want to link it to. So when your vehicle is moving, It'll move with the vehicle and not floating somewhere stupidly. So you always want to link your bone to the either the main bone, main vehicle bone, or one similar, like to the back, or whichever one you choose that wherever the fan's gonna be. Now after that, after you export it, you uh, you want to put this line of code in your in your XML. This is the rakery, which I already did. So I'm going to show you that. The rotator is the modifier, or whatever you call it, that makes it spin. Parent frame is the bone fan, which we created. It's got the bone fan, the name is bone fan. And the rotator speed tells it how fast to rotate. <coughs> Excuse me. I went, originally I went 20, and I had a, had a fast spin, and you really couldn't tell that I was spinning. Heinz suggested let's make it slower. So I went five, and uh, he was correct. He was able to see it easier on five. I mean, you can do what you want, however you like it. Five is what we went with. Uh, another thing, uh, you don't need the access constraints or whatever this is called here, like this here access where it shows this, because it always defaults on the Y axis. If you did it like I did, you don't have to worry about it. You can add, if you use a different access somehow, localhost shows that how, how to add it in, and I believe it's the, um, it is a uh, spin tires plus thread. I'm not sure I've seen it though, that he showed it. But again, it, it, it defaults to the Y axis, and you don't need to show the accesses when you choose which one. Also, now, I want to show you this. The rotating speed always rotates clockwise. If you want it to go counterclockwise, you would put a negative, and that would, a minus there, and that would be a negative number, and it would rotate the opposite direction. I just went regular. That was good enough. Also, the line I put in between truck data and physical model. I believe that's where it was in the CRAS hazard lights. When I figure this out, and it's, it works fine right here, and basically that's how you do it, and you're, you should be set. Nope. I'm just gonna select that. So if you follow along the way I did it, and and hopefully this helped you out, and you were able to do this fine. Have a good day, and I hope I hope you figure it out.